Hi everybody! Using a snoot in underwater photography can really enhance your image. Most importantly, a small beam of light can eliminate a potentially distracting background, it can really reduce backscatter, and by sculpting what specific aspect of the subject you want to show, or by highlighting texture and topography, you can really make your images stand out. They can become more creative and more artistic. In this video, I'm going to give you my top tips on using a snoot with underwater photography. Let's check it out. Okay, let's talk about dive conditions. It's best if you can pick conditions with minimal surge or current. I used this snoot on a very small, less than one centimeter in length nudibranch in shallow water, but there was a lot of surge, and most of my images were either really blurred or the snoot and or camera missed the nudibranch entirely. This was my best image and it's still not that great. Another one is subject selection. Find a subject that's not only approachable, but is at least sometimes fairly still. This little drumfish was moving around almost all the time and wouldn't hold still. I got many shots and I tried to aim my camera and snoot and focus on the little fish. I took about 15 images. This was my best one and I don't think it's all that great. Another thing is beam size. My snoot comes with easily exchangeable apertures to vary the size and shape of the beam, but sometimes it's a little difficult to judge. Here, my beam was too large for this little jawfish, and you can't even really tell I was using a snoot. The surroundings and background are illuminated as much as the subject. My initial snoot beam size on this one was way too small for this yellow line arrow crab. The most difficult thing I find in using a snoot is collimating the camera and the snoot beam. In other words, you've got to aim your camera and focus your camera on the subject and aim the little tiny snoot beam right on that subject uh, as well. It's hard to find and focus my camera on a macro or super macro subject anyway. Now I must precisely aim the snooted beam or the subject will of course be completely dark. Now here's a very small moray eel with taken with my normal Ike light strobe. It's okay. My first attempt at using a snoot, I was able to fix and focus my camera on the little eel, but the snoot was not properly aimed, so my snoot's beam missed the subject. Didn't look too good. Here's a better image. Now the snooted beam is properly aimed right at the eel. Now there are different ways to collimate your camera and snooted beam, and I will discuss this more in a subsequent video. One way is to set your focus and your uh, snooted camera at a fixed distance. However, I have found this very difficult and you cannot vary the snooted beam's angle relative to the camera. The best way I, the most luck I've had is to visualize my snooted beam by using a strobe with a guide light. And this works best in dimmer conditions since the guide light from the strobe is fairly dim and you need to be able to see the, the guide light. Also, I have to turn my focus light off or I won't be able to see my snooted beam through the guide light. I almost also almost always detach the snooted beam from the housing and hold it in my left hand while holding and aiming the camera in my and depressing the shutter in my right. It's much easier if I can rest my elbows and camera on the seafloor for added stability, which is what I did in focusing and getting this mantis shrimp. Better yet, it's good if you can have a dive buddy who will be kind and cooperative enough to hold and position the snoot right at your subject under your direction. Now another thing, illumination. When using a snoot, sometimes my images are under illuminated. I have to check my LCD and histogram, and if not proper illumination, I try to back off when making adjustments. Open my aperture, increase my strobe power, increase the ISO. But I have to back off so as not to frighten the subject, but then you have to go in and find the same subject again with your camera. Finally, don't forget to make a few post-processing adjustments, adjustments, okay? So here's a little tiny juvenile scorpion fish that I got with my normal strobe. Much better when using my snoot, but even here there's a little back scatter. You can still see some of the background. Uh, it doesn't take long. I'm not much for using Photoshop and Lightroom. It doesn't take much to do a little bit of cropping, remove what little back scatter there is, and make the black background blacker, and now you've turned a relatively boring image into what I think is a really cool image. So in conclusion, tips for using a snoot, the main ones are pick suitable dive conditions where there's not a lot of surge or current. Subject selection, try to find a subject that will allow a close approach and that will is not moving around constantly. And then get the proper beam size, 
be very careful how to aim your beam. It's nice if you can detach your beam uh, from your, your snooted beam from your strobe and use your strobe's guide light. And then look at your beam power. Make sure you check your LCD histogram. And then do a little judicial post-processing. Well, thank you so much for your kind attention.